Tracks is sponsored by Polaris, think outside. Can-Am, time for some off-road living. And by Yamaha, revs your heart. If you've watched anything on our social media recently, you know that I absolutely love the new Polaris Razor Trail S. From function to styling, it's an awesome side-by-side, -side, so I thought, why wouldn't I use this as the base for a new bolt-on build? And by bolt-on build, I mean parts from the manufacturer built for this side-by-side -side and guaranteed to fit. No universal fitment here, this is a pure Polaris parts build for this Polaris Razor. So I know even before I open the box, they're gonna fit right and work hard. And Polaris has some pre-selected accessory packages that you can choose from, showing what the finished product will look like and also the retail price and part numbers for each product needed to make your build turn out exactly like you see theirs. Side-by-side -side riders can typically be split up into four main groups. You've got mud, sand, general trail riding, and then rock crawling. And while you probably do all of these things with your side-by-side -side at one time or another, typically you'll be driven towards one of those areas more than the others. And I've done more than enough mud running over the past few years, and if you want strictly mud, there's a high lifter razor for you. Likewise, pure sand is more of a focus of the razor turbos, and general trail riding, well, any razor in stock form covers this off very well. So we're left with rock crawling, possibly the most potentially abusive of disciplines in off-road. If rocks are your thing, accessories should be also, to keep your rig coming back for more and not you going to your dealer to replace parts. And with that being said, it's time for me to take this Razor Trail S1000 further towards rock crawling. And Polaris, they've supplied me with everything I need to do just that. If you crawl and your rig is stock, the first and most important accessory known to man for a side-by-side -side is, <laughs> no, not a winch, although usually I would agree with that. Nope, for rock crawling, it's rock sliders, 100% rock sliders. For the Trail S, I'm putting on the low-profile rock slider as they spread out and load better than the tubular ones. And I also find because of that, they have less tendency to bend. They mount up with expandable anchor mounts that are incredibly simple to install. Don't hesitate to do this one yourself at home. You can do it. Also, the nice part about using a standard black color, because these do also come in bright red, is that not if, but when they get beat up, and it's gonna happen. You can pull them off in the off season and give them a little bit of a sand and spray with textured paint or even bed liner to get them back to their original glory. Going hand in hand with rock sliders are bumpers. And while we hope to never use them, we're gonna end up using them. Whether it's tree limbs or tight rocky situations, bumpers are gonna protect the plastics that you don't want repair bills for. The obvious first choice is the front bumper, and so that's where I'm gonna start. This is called the high coverage bumper, and it's in matching black matte to the rock sliders, and likewise can be future fixed with the same paint. This bumper utilizes tall front headlight tubular surrounds that will act like limb lifters for any greenery that tries to get in your front end, and also covers all the way down past your grill, keeping your rad safe, and likewise down past the opening for the winch and fair lead. There are two mounts for cube lights, and the Polaris winches will work in conjunction with this bumper. Man, it looks pretty. I'm gonna feel bad scratching that thing up. Nah, who am I kidding? No, I'm not. Now the rear of the Sport has quite a bit of tubing that's protecting the exhaust as well as the center of the rear box, but when it comes to those really pretty LED taillights that are extremely expensive to replace, there's not a whole lot there. So let's go ahead and do something about that. This rear bumper extension is just an add-on. It's not a full bumper like up front as it doesn't need to be. The cost is kept low on this part because it blends in with the factory tubing to make for a very all-encompassing rear protection. Should you back up into something that doesn't want to budge, your plastics and taillights will still be intact. And I gotta say, it's not just function here. The fit and style of this rear bumper extension really looks good. It just finishes off the rear of the Trail S properly. Now I told you earlier that the front bumper works with Polaris winches, and a winch when you're out rock crawling is pretty much essential, whether you find yourself high centered or there's a rock wall that's just too big to get over. And the Polaris Pro HD Rapid Recovery 4,500 pound winch is a rock crawler's dream. Firstly, because it's easy to install, bolts right in, and Polaris has made wiring and routing of the wires super simple, so you can tackle it at home, should you want to. But secondly, because it's a 4,500 pound rapid recovery winch, which means the winch will retrieve five times faster than the standard winch. So you not only use less battery power, you also spend less time getting all that cable back into the spool. 4,500 pound winches are my go-to for side-by-side. -side. The Pro HD comes with a corded and wireless remote as well as an auto-stop feature that knows when the hook has reached the fair lead 
and stops you from overspooling and binding up your synthetic rope. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by MBRP Performance Exhaust, built for the Victory Lab. Now, while rock crawling accessories are super functional and really important, I also want to address comfort because when you're out riding, you got to be comfortable. The black matte aluminum arched roof is going to keep us out of the sun when we're playing. And during general riding, it just makes things much more enjoyable, especially for passengers. Sun beating down on you can wear you out quicker than you might expect. This roof is aluminum, so it's light and easy to put on. I'm going to add to this both a windshield and a back panel as well to keep out water, mud and dust. The front optical grade lock and ride hard coat windshield is full size, features a top and bottom seal and integrates seamlessly with the factory dash, as well as our new aluminum roof and it's lock and ride so it snaps right on. The rear panel is also lock and ride so it takes seconds to both install or remove and features the same gaskets and premium integration with the roof and likewise plastic rear cab bodywork. Using a rear panel actually stops the swirling motion created by a windshield where the cab is actually negatively pressurized and therefore dust is drawn in. So to me, a rear panel should really go hand in hand with a windshield. Okay, so that's probably enough for comfort and convenience. Let's get back to the parts that are gonna help us crawl better. And these beauties right here will do just that. Moving from our stock 27 inch trail masters and 12 inch rims, we're gonna swap those out for an aggressive set of Pro Armor Crawler XR tires in 28 inch diameter by 10 inches wide. And that's all around, a square tire as we like to call it. These tires are set up with a softer rubber compound or durometer and like to stick to the rocks. The extra one inch of size won't require us to install a clutch kit and the Pro Armor 14 inch buckle rims give us that custom look that'll set us apart from other Trail S razors that we see out on the trail. One of the nice parts about ordering Pro Armor tires and rims from your Polaris dealer is that they come pre-mounted so you don't have any added expense and you can just bolt them on and ride. Speaking of bolting them on, we decided to also use a nice set of Polaris 12mm by 1.5 chrome splined lug nuts for both security and that custom chrome accent look. And the spline socket is included. While this build is almost a wrap, there's one more trio of accessories that I find immeasurably helpful out on the trails, but most importantly, on the rocks. And those parts are mirrors. You can never have too much visibility and tire placement and knowing where you are spatially is massive in executing technical crawling trails. So both side and rear view mirrors come in handy continually. If I had to choose one or the other, I think side mirrors when crawling for me would be number one because of rear tire placement. And this adjustable and folding side mirror pair made out of cast aluminum are perfect for helping me out and also moving out of the way if things get tight. Now I'm all for more visibility, so I'm gonna pair up the side mirrors with the Polaris Premium Convex rear view mirror, also made out of cast aluminum and featuring cast aluminum mounts for rugged durability. This mirror gives you the panoramic wide view of what's happening out back. I find myself looking for a rear view mirror out of habit on all side by sides, and when you actually have one, it's just another level of confidence from trail riding to rock crawling. Now I could be done and just let this thing look all pretty and sit the way that it is, but I just didn't feel like that would be right because we have a local Jeep crawling facility that's pretty gnarly and has some intense rock crawling situations. So I'm gonna go get some gear on and I'll see you out on the trail. Polaris offers a wide variety of accessories and parts to make your side-by-side -side or ATV exactly what you want it to be. And some of their more recent suggestions, giving you all of the part numbers as well as prices, is really handy if you want to turn your buggy into, well, just about anything. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto, make it work. So you just bought a side-by-side -side and you're really excited to get out and ride it, but you realize that all of your buddies like to travel to the best riding destinations and you don't have a trailer. Truth is, you don't need one. 
Mad Ramps has an answer that's simple to use and incredibly versatile. We've showed you the MR1400 system in the past, allowing you to haul a vehicle up to 1400 pounds, but now the system has evolved and is pushing those hauling numbers further, opening up the possibilities for what your truck can carry. The new system for Mad Ramps is called the MR2000 and is designed for pickup trucks with 2.5 inch hitch receivers. So for everybody with a 1500 series truck, this one isn't for you. This is for guys with 2500 and 3500 HD trucks. MR2000 stands for Mad Ramps 2000 pounds and will allow us to haul an ATV or side-by-side -side up to 2000 pounds with nothing more than this ramp system and our 2.5 inch hitch equipped pickup truck. The beauty of Mad Ramps is the way that you get both the ramps for loading and unloading with the extended bed space for longer side-by-sides. With the extra capacity, those of you with flat deck equipped pickup trucks can also now carry side-by-sides up to 64 inches wide. But for those of you with regular pickup beds, we're still sticking with the 50 inches or less. Installation of the Mad Ramp system is pretty simple and straightforward to follow, and likewise, afterwards, using it is very simple. Now, the ramps themselves self-stow, and the actual system itself is adjustable in height depending on where you use your pickup truck. When not in use, the ramps are stowed in a forwards position so they can't move and are locked in place. When it's time to load, you simply unlock the ramps and then lock them in the extended position. Tilt the Mad Ramps to the ground and drive up. When your rear tires go over center, you lock the end pins in place and stow the ramps. That's it, that's all. You're ready to roll. The system even has two LED brake and turn signal lights under the ramp for increased visibility. Now, if you're using a lifted truck or even just a 2500 or 3500 series four-wheel drive truck, you might also want to look at the ramp extensions, which simply clip over the existing ramp to give you a more gradual angle or greater reach for lifted trucks. The extensions lock in place with a simple spring lock retainer pin and do need to be removed and stowed for transportation. Mad ramps can be used for ATVs, side-by-sides, or golf carts and are truly a versatile system for being able to take your toys with you without the need for a trailer. And remember, that trailer needs registration and insurance as well as a large spot to place it at home and at the destination you're taking your toys to. Now that's not to say the trailers don't have their place, and we certainly know that they do. But the Mad Ramps is a great option should you not have a trailer in your fleet. And while I'm on the topic of trailers, Blue Ox, which is an associated brand to Mad Ramps, knows a few things about towing. And if you do already have a trailer to use for your ATV or side-by-side, -side, I've got a couple things that you might be interested in. Now firstly is the new adjustable line of ball hitches from Blue Ox. There was a time where you had to carry all different kinds of drops with you and then also different ball mounts depending on whether your trailer was a 2 inch or 2 and 5 sixteenths. Not only was it frustrating to have to keep these in stock, but it was also expensive to switch up the ball should it be the wrong size. And give it 4 or 5 years of use and then you're dealing with rust on the threads and yeah, you get the picture. Well now, Blue Ox has a great selection of adjustable hitches that can be used for both drop or rise with a simple flip of the hitch. The options are a 4 or 7 inch drop or rise for 2 inch hitch receivers, both rated at 10,000 pounds. Then for bigger HD trucks with a 2.5 inch receiver, there's the same 4 and 7 inch drop or rise, but with the increased receiver size, you also get a rating of 12,000 pounds. The system is super easy to use with a twin pin design and a snap clevis on the end. You put it where you want it, you set it, it's super strong and it gives you a very positive attachment. The solid ball mount is also exceptionally beefy, made out of strong steel and will be here for the long haul. One thing I appreciate about the steel design over aluminum adjustable ball mounts is that the steel won't wear like my aluminum hitches have in the past. Over time, aluminum grinds and wears, making the hitch sloppy and loose, whereas this steel design from Blue Ox will stay true year after year. Many of the hitches you see on the market today use a double ball design, a two inch on the one side and a two and five sixteenths on the other, so you have to flip it. When it comes to Blue Ox, they came up with a much simpler idea. No need to flip your hitch to get the other size, just snap on the weight safe clamshell ball increaser with magnetic closure and you're ready to go for a two and five sixteenths. This little magnetic wonder comes in the box with your Blue Ox adjustable ball mount and gives you ultimate versatility. It's made of stainless so it won't rust, it has a built in hinge and it allows your current two inch ball rating to stay the same when used. You're supposed to remove it when not in use, but putting one of these in your driver's door storage pocket is sure to come in handy. Mad Ramps and Blue Ox offers a wide variety of towing accessories and products to answer the needs of your towing vehicle. Whether it be ATVs and snowmobiles behind your pickup truck or motorhomes and travel trailers, they've got the answer to your towing needs. One of the biggest requests we get from our viewers, that's you, is to do longer term reviews of the vehicles we test, or at the very least, comment on their long term durability. 
Most of the time, for obvious reasons, that's impossible. Two of the biggest reasons are, first, we only comment on our own experiences. We never regurgitate information we've read somewhere else. Our thoughts and opinions are our own, which is why you can trust them. And second, oftentimes the vehicle we're testing hasn't even been available for a full year. Today though, I've got an interesting opportunity to test a vehicle that has truly been put through its paces. This 2020 Maverick Sport Max has been passed from media outlet to media outlet all across North America for the past year and has racked up an impressive 2,400 kilometers or just under 1,500 miles. Anyone who's ever been present during a media test knows we don't baby these things, we ride them hard. So a test mule like this one with as many miles as it has will give us a good idea of just how durable the Maverick Sport Max really is. Before we go any further, let's do a real quick overview of what makes up a Maverick Sport Max, then we'll move on to my impressions. Obviously the Sport Max is a stretched version of the Maverick Sport. There's only one Sport Max model available for 2021. It has DPS and it comes in black. The version we have here also has DPS, but was available in orange in 2020. Just like all the other Maverick Sport models, this one is powered by a 976 CCV twin that pumps out 100 claimed horsepower. It rides on double A-arms front and rear that yield a very well-balanced 12.5 inches of travel up front and 13 inches out back, all damped by a set of Fox Podium 2.0 QS3 shocks. The QRS quick response CV transmission with electronic belt protection drives power through a high-low gearbox into Can-Am's ViscoLock QE or quick engagement front differential. Multiple drive modes and active descent control and DPS power steering are standard as are 27-inch Maxxis Bighorn 2.0 tires wrapped around 12-inch aluminum rims front and rear. A front bumper, skid plates, half doors and mud guards round out the Sport DPS package. Obviously, this Maverick model is absolutely loaded with Can-Am accessories. In fact, I don't think I've ever tested a side-by-side -side with more accessories than this one has. But just to be clear, these accessories are not included with a new Maverick. Now that we understand what this unit is made of, let's head out on the trail and see how it performs after more than a year of hard running. The first thing I noticed about this Maverick having the mileage on it that it does is that it does not have a lot of squeaks and rattles or strange noises. The few that it does seem to have, they seem to me to be coming more from the accessories than the actual base platform. Likewise, the steering feels as tight as the day it was built. Oftentimes, after this many miles, a side-by-side -side or ATV can develop some play in the steering. It's very common, but on this Maverick, there doesn't seem to be any. The motor itself runs great after all these miles, but I wouldn't say it feels exceptionally powerful even in sport mode. Can-Am claims it makes 100 horsepower and I have no reason to doubt that, but where many other Can-Am Maverick models have power delivery I feel is excessively abrupt or jumpy, I actually feel the power delivery on this Maverick Sport is on the soft side, especially when compared to its biggest competitor, the Razor 1000S. Now with that said, the power delivery is extremely smooth and easy to control, which is great for keeping your passengers comfortable in a four-seat side-by-side. After 2,400 kilometers, you might start to think a vehicle that gets used off-road like this one would start to look worn out, or at least show some significant signs of use or wear, especially on the inside. However, this is simply not the case. This unit shows almost no signs of wear or excessive use at all inside or out, which in my opinion is impressive to say the least. I talked about how the steering doesn't seem to have developed any looseness or play at all. The same goes for the suspension. There aren't any rattles or clumpy noises coming from worn out bushings or pivot points. The shocks are excellent and, if anything, feel like they're actually more plush after 2400 kilometers than how they feel on a brand new unit. Overall, I have to say that I am very impressed with how this Can-Am Maverick has held up after 2400 kilometers, and I think this is the type of info you guys have been looking for. Does it start to feel loose or rattly? Does it develop play in areas it shouldn't? Does it start to look worn out or show excessive signs of wear? In this case, to all of these questions, the answer is no. It feels almost as good as a brand new unit, and I really can't think of anything to complain about in terms of its age or how it's held up after 1500 miles. which leaves me only one conclusion to come to. If you're in the market for a four seat sport side-by-side -side, and you want something you know will still look and feel new after a couple seasons of use, Can-Am's Maverick Sport Max should be at the top of your list. 
It's impressed me big time, and I'm more than confident it's going to impress you exactly the same way. Dirt Tracks has been sponsored by Hercules Tire, ride in our strength. Jemco Cargo Boxes, be prepared for anything. And by Mad Ramps, leave the trailer and go.